Good evening, my name is Roxanne Chabot. Welcome to another International Dermatology Education Foundation Educational Series webinar. This evening, as our chair, we have Dr. Leon Kursik. Dr. Kursik is president of the International Dermatology Education Foundation, as well as clinical professor of dermatology at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York and Indiana University Medical Center, Indianapolis. He is also medical director at Physician Skin Care, Derm Research and Skin Sciences in Louisville, Kentucky. This evening, we're going to explore a new topical treatment for plaque psoriasis with Dr. Pearl Kwong. Dr. Kwong is in private practice and she's a faculty at Mercer University, Orange Park Medical Center, HCA Dermatology Program. We also have the opportunity this evening to have a chat with Mr. John D'Onofrio, who is Chief Executive Officer at EPI Health. We would like to thank our supporter, EPI Health, for making this educational event possible. Before we begin, if you're having issues hearing the webinar, you can listen to the presentation using your telephone. Just select phone call in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. If, oops. if you're having technical issues or if you would like to submit a question to our faculty, please submit your questions in the question chat pane on the right-hand side of your screen. At the end of this webinar, a survey will pop up in your browser and will be emailed to you within one to two days. We'd greatly appreciate it if you could fill in the questionnaire and send it back to us. Within one to two days of the webinar, a certificate of attendance will also be sent to you. Again, if you'd like to submit a question to our faculty, please submit the question in the question chat pane on the right-hand side of your screen. And I wrote a little note there so you saw you would see where you need to type in your question. So without further ado, I will pass the floor virtually to Dr. Leon Kursik. Roxanne, thank you very much and good evening everyone. Uh, tonight we have a special program, I have to say. We have a special guest. It's a little bit different than what we do usually. We always have a topic of psoriasis, atopic term, whatever that is, and we have a great speaker. But tonight, we are very lucky to have John Donofrio, the CEO and the president of EPI Health. And uh, welcome, John. Thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening, Dr. Kirksick. Thank you for having us. So, John, you are not new to dermatology. I know you for many, many years, and you have been around the corner for many, many years. However, however, EPI Health is sort of new to dermatology. And, uh, you know, we always welcome in our community the new companies, especially dedicated to dermatology, specialized in dermatology. So I'm really excited to have this chat with you. If you can just tell us a little bit about EPI Health. Yeah, absolutely. I have just a few slides. And, and as you mentioned, I've, I've been around for a while, but I've been around kind of in the back office. I've been chief financial officer at MERS, chief financial officer at Stiefel and, and head of operations. So becoming CEO and president and getting more exposure to our community has been fantastic. But I do have just a couple of slides to talk to you about EPI Health, if we, if we could show those, please. Um, one of the first things that you'll see is um, a lot of people, when they first see our name, they think Epi Health. We've heard that time and time again. And uh, we'd like to understand that EPI actually stands for Evening Post Industries. And even though EPI Health is relatively new, Evening Post Industries goes, dates back to 1896 uh, with the establishment and the purchasing of the, the Post and Courier here in Charleston, South Carolina. So we're a privately owned company, family-based um, here in Charleston, uh, the mecca of not only tourism, but the mecca of pharmaceuticals. Um, and you can see as our company, our parent company has evolved from both post um, the Post and Courier newspapers to TV stations to healthcare in the in 2014, um, they moved into healthcare and, and um, acquired some hospice centers throughout the Southeast. And then in 2017, uh, our parent company expanded into pharmaceuticals with the acquisition of Cypher Pharmaceuticals, which then led to EPI Health. Next slide, please. 
So when you see the evolution of EPI health, we, we show this in a timeline. So you could see pre-2017, we had uh, less than 20 representatives in the field, and we had products like Bionel, uh, Bi <laughs> Bionec, Nuvail, Cidavig. And uh, the, the intent when Evening Post Industries acquired was to invest in people in both products. And uh, we've been fortunate to have a parent company to help us invest and grow. And you can see through this timeline, we've acquired products like Benzel in 2018, and then really took a step up in 2019, acquiring Cloderm uh, so we could compete in atopic dermatitis, and then also launched Minolira in early 2017, now being in acne. Uh, in 2019, we acquired Rofade, so we can now participate in rosacea, and we expanded from 20 representatives to 34. And then we had some exciting news about a year ago at this time when we announced a partnership with MC2 Therapeutics uh, to partner together to launch Winzora, which launched in July uh, of this year, and we'll be talking about uh, shortly, to now enter into psoriasis. So you can see we've been quite busy over the last um, uh, two and a half years and really now four years as a company trying to expand and grow in our amazing industry. Uh, next slide, please. So just to give you an overview and summary, you know, we are a growing privately, special, especially pharmaceutical company focused on dermatology. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to evolve a leadership team with extensive dermatology experience. Uh, we've been in big small pharma, small pharma, uh, different disease states, but a lot in dermatology, aesthetics, and medical dermatology. We are focused on medical dermatology, and we are now focused in four key areas, in acne, rosacea, psoriasis, and dermatosis. As you can see, our product lines evolved um, over the last few years. We currently have 42 sales territories supporting our organization, and we plan to, uh, to move to 50 uh, in the first quarter of 2022. Um, and we have an extensive pharmacy network and market access expertise to facilitate access to our medications. And really where we're trying to go with this is uh, continue. We've built a great commercial platform. We've created a foundation of products. And uh, we're looking to continue to partner with organizations that are looking to bring products into our, our market in acne, rosacea, psoriasis, and atopic dermatitis. So we're excited to continue this journey and uh, really appreciate the time tonight to get to share a little bit more about our company. So John, thank you so much. That's really exciting. You know, you do have some of the oldies, but goodies, such as the Cloderm, one of my favorite, but it's really exciting that you also have new molecules and new products such as Winzora. But I know tonight's uh, motto was uh, working together for the benefit of patients. Tell me a little bit, how are you planning to do that? And what does really that mean for you guys? So for what working with patients means is really is a partnership, right? I think we should learn from each other. Um, we, we have our shared experiences in our industry together. And ultimately, our shared experiences together benefit our patients. Our company mission statement challenges our employees to add value and make a difference to not only our providers, but also to our patients and the people we work with. So one of the questions that of course people get excited when they hear about the working together with the, for the patients, for the benefits of patients, the first thing that comes to mind is access, access, access. You know, you can have the best drug, but if you cannot get it to our patients, what good is that? So can you give us an idea about access a little bit? What are you guys doing? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we share the, the frustration on this issue uh, with, with, with the, the rest of our community. Um, you know, our goal as an organization is to make our products affordable and accessible as possible uh, while we can still operate and continue to do business. We spend a lot of time and considerable resource um, each year negotiating contracts with payers and pharmacy benefit managers um, that demand significant rebates. And, and you hear this not only from EPI Health, but across our entire industry, which also has a negative impact. Um, so we're investing also in our, our pharmacy networks. We also are um, playing a crucial role um, in, um, in not only our pharmacy networks, but also having affordable copay card uh, assistance for, for our, our patients. You could see that as a private company, uh, we, we offer, and a smaller company, we, we offer an extremely benef uh, beneficial um, copay card program. And, uh, and in you, as you guys are well aware, a lot of times the out-of-pocket costs for generic um, in many instances are expensive or more expensive than the branded. And, and lastly, unlike a lot of smaller companies in our, in our uh, specialty, uh, we offer a, a, a patient assistance program uh, for those who can't afford our medications. 
that's great to know. You know, um, those are all important things so that we can get the uh, the drugs to our patients. Um, you know, you have to launch Winzora in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, I know I saw you live about uh, last weekend in Vegas. However, you know, still people are shy to come out. Still, the reps have limited access to the doctors' offices. How are you handling that? It's been challenging for a lot of the companies. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, it's just like everybody else, we, we've had we've had concerns of access in the offices, and and part of that's also just your time has become even more valuable and more challenging, right? So, not only you hear a lot of times in our industry how hard it is for the rep. To, to get access, but I think we had to step back and take an appreciation for the impact that it's had on, on your time as well. And, and so we really tried to do that by offering uh, first understanding and being empathetic to our customer. That was one of the one of our values as a company. And not only do we apply that internally, but apply that externally. Um, we're also trying to ensure we use all avenues of both virtual um, and in live. So it was great to see everybody in person, but you know, we also know that you know, time doesn't permit that. So we feel like we've become expertise in both the virtual and um, and and we still want to keep those those relationships going and um, and and continue the personal interactions and also just supporting things like uh, um, of this session. Right, medical education is extremely important to our company. It was extremely important to our industry. And um, sometimes when you're a smaller company, you get um, a little bit, um, you know, get lost in the bigger shuffle. So we want to ensure that we we provide that support and that education and that partnership with our industry. Great. One of the questions I just got, other than the access, what kind of other challenges or problems we are facing in dermatology as well? You know, not only us as providers, but also you as uh, the pharmaceutical industry. Right. So I, I do think, again, going back to access to your time is, is, is very important. Um, ensuring that we provide value uh, to our to our customers to get that time. Also, building relationships with younger providers is also a challenge in today when you don't have that access. Um, we've been fortunate to build great relationships over the time, but we find that more and more difficult as we continue to go forward. And you know, as as, as a company, we are going to continue, and as an industry, we're going to continue to fight the challenges that we get at the payer. Continue to drive um, valuable access to our medications. And and one of the things that I, when we talked earlier about this conversation, you know, when we when we join this industry, or I mean, from a provider and company, we want to help patients and um, and provide value to price patients and benefit to them. And we feel like that sometimes has gotten lost um, with just focusing so much on the payer and the pharmacy and all the other challenges, not only just life, right? Um, I, we've had to step back as an organization and say, whoa, we talk about so many things. We got to remember why we're here. And I know that goes both ways. We've had a lot of conversations. So our also job is just to make sure that the patient does not get lost in all our other focuses. And, and we're going to continue to make that commitment, um, not only to our customers, but to our patients. Uh, I guess somebody knows you've been already to MERS and you've been on the aesthetic side. So how do you see evolution of medical dermatology and then maybe mixing with the aesthetic dermatology? Right. Yeah, I, I I love my time at MERS. I uh, it came from a family back uh, uh, company just like uh, EPI Health. Um, you know, I think for us and for the industry, you know, understanding how I think when we even have conversations, even though we are focused totally on medical dermatology, uh, for us as a smaller company, I think it remains as long as we focus on medical dermatology uh, and and how it can and um, benefit our patients, trying to extend our resources and trying to do things that and do multiple things and, and focus is a challenge for small companies. So, so a company like EPI Health, we're going to stay focused in medical dermatology. However, for companies like MERS and others, I think it's a fantastic thing to be able to provide services across your entire practice, right? So that's one of the benefits. You have your, you know, you have your medical dermatology side, you have your aesthetic side, you have your, you know, you know, have a lot of different cash pay. So I think it's fantastic for our industry, but I think there's a big difference between the, the bigger companies and the smaller companies here. And, um, you know, we're, we applaud the bigger companies and, and we think it's great. But for the smaller companies, uh, we've made a, uh, you know, a really uh, tough decision because uh, I like that side of the business. We want to be the 
uh, best partner for you across your whole practice, but to make sure we're focusing and do a good job, we're going to stay focused and dedicated to medical dermatology. We appreciate, we still get a lot of calls for aesthetics um, products and, and to partner provide that, but um, we see the value for you, but for EPI Health, uh, we're going to try and stay in our sweet spot um, in medical dermatology. You know, that's sort of music to my ears. You know, I do medical dermatology and nothing against aesthetic dermatology, but of course, uh, I think that's very, very important. So speaking of medical dermatology, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your partnership with MC2? And we're going to hear later today about Vinzora, but maybe you can tell us a little bit about your partnership with MC2. Yeah, absolutely. So, so when I first came to EPI Health, our tagline was advancing dermatology. And when I came and looked is basically we were a commercial organization. Um, and, and why that still helps and we want to provide samples and, and education and things like that. Um, if we really want to be innovative and, and advancing, you, and that come from the bigger companies where we've done research development and partnered uh, to develop new medicines, uh, we identified that was a gap for EPI Health. Now, saying same thing with that dynamic between getting involved in aesthetics and all kinds of other things, our expertise is not going to manufacture or be R&D, but to partner with companies like MC2 Health that have a tremendous technology, can not only help in psoriasis, but future um, compounds down the road. If we can be the partner of choice and say, not only can we help you launch your product, but then commercially, um, um, excel at, at promoting your product and getting it into uh, providers and patients' hands and be that uh, commercial company of choice, that was our goal. And, and the great thing about our MC2 collaboration, they're also privately owned, uh, have very similar culture and values, and we're very open and transparent. So it truly is a partnership um, where we work together each and every day, which is a little bit different sometimes when somebody just hands something over to you um, and then and you take it from there. So we and the fact that they've been uh, working on this product for a fairly long time. They've uh, said many times they've handed their baby over to us and they trust that to to launch and, and successfully put this product uh, into the market. So uh, it's definitely a partnership. There's not too many like it in our industry. And uh, we're very fortunate not only to partner on this particular opportunity, but as their pipeline continues to evolve, uh, we look to be their partner choice uh, from for a very long time. That's really good to hear. You know, as you said, sometimes the companies just transfer the drug and leave it on you. And it's good that we MC2 has the has a stake on it and have their hands on in the um, in every day. So it's really good to know. So finally, I just want to ask you. I know you through the companies you've been involved with, with dermatology, but I know you've been personally involved with dermatology as well, such as Camp Wonder. Tell us a little bit about your experience with that. Oh, wow. wow. You're hitting close to home now. So, um, you know, when, when sometimes we think about patients and personally, I've, I've worked with Camp Wonder and the Children's Skin Disease Foundation for, for over 10 years now. And, um, you know, I both as a board member, as a volunteer, I've been a camper. <laughs> I've probably played more at camp than I volunteered. But, but for those of you who know Camp Discovery, Camp Wonder, um, it provides just a, a camp for kids with, um, you know, significant rare skin diseases, challenging skin diseases. Um, and, and the whole purpose of that camp is just to have children that, that do not have a great quality of life. Um, to just have a normal week of camp experience uh, where they just feel like a kid and they don't feel like they're limited by their disease or the the, the stereotypes that come across them and all the challenges that our children have, uh, not only with the, you know these these diseases that are very visible but very painful and and how they're um, how they're treated. So our job as a camp and as a board is just to make them feel um, just normal for a week. And we've now exp expanded that um, experience to um, pretty much the whole year round where we, we have uh, events and opportunities to just share time and, and support uh, these families. And, and it really helps bring home back to us. Like I mentioned, we've lost focus on the patient at times and uh, camp humbles me in so many ways, but it reminds me of why you do what you do and why we do what we do. And it inspires me of what those children do and the providers that work at the camps to help these children are just some amazing people. And it just brings that benefit of the patients um, and just a positive impact. Um, and people say it's great to volunteer and it's amazing, but I'll tell you, I get more out of 
volunteering and supporting those camps than I ever give back to those kids. But um, it's a fantastic opportunity and I'm great that a lot of the top players and companies that we partner with and compete with support this amazing organization. I'm very proud to be a part of it. And I appreciate you asking. It's, it's a really special place. That's so good to hear. And I'm sure those kids, they all appreciate what you do for them. So we're almost running out of time, but before we leave, uh, do you have a final message to give to the Durham community as audiences are here? Yeah, uh, again, just on behalf of all our employees here at EPI Health, um, you know, we, we just uh, we appreciate the relationship and we have value for that relationship. And we're going to continue to, um, you know, evolve our practices, evolve our medication, continue supporting and education and supporting not only your providers, but also our, our patients. And, and the fact that we have an opportunity to talk about our company and talk about how we work together and, and our patients. So we have a continued commitment to this industry. Uh, we've worked hard over the past few years to build this and we're going to continue to build it to provide value. And uh, we just thank you for um, really giving us a seat at the table too, uh, being a smaller a company and and and, uh, and we've uh, really enjoyed all the relationships and, and just very appreciative and, and thank you again very much. Thank you, John. And I am sure everybody in Durham community welcomes you with an open heart and wholeheartedly because we need more and more companies like you committed to dermatology. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for your support. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Kursik. Okay, so next we have a great speaker, Dr. Kwong. She is in private practice in Jacksonville and she is faculty at Mercer University. Uh, Dr. Kwong, welcome and thank you for joining us. Please take it from here. Tell us a little bit about this new topical treatment for plaque psoriasis. Well, thank you, Leon, for having me and thank you, EPI, for sponsoring this program and uh, and I'm excited to present on Winzora. So this is the presentation overview. And first of all, I want to talk about the impact of psoriasis on our patients, just to remind you about their quality of life. And then I'm excited about Winzora cream. I'll show you the data from the phase three studies and also the, what's so special about Winzora cream and uh, understanding the PAD technology and the safety dosing and administration. So uh, those are the three main things that we will present. So um, as you know, mild to moderate psoriasis is very common in the United States. And most of the time, uh, the mild psoriasis can be managed with topical therapies alone. And topical therapies are the most preferred form of treatment over oral and infusion therapy. And, uh, and we can help a lot of patients because in the United States itself, uh, U.S. adults 20 years and older, uh, there's about 3.2% prevalence with 7.4 million adults uh, estimated to have psoriasis. And the cost burden for psoriasis is estimated at this time, maybe this was done about 2009 to 2010, 11.25 billion annually. That's a lot of money. So this is a significant disease, significant disease affecting a lot of patients. So when we hear about psoriasis, it's not just the appearance of the psoriasis, there's also the symptoms. And we, we forget to ask about the burden of their symptoms. And is there pain? Is there fatigue? Is there itching? We forget to ask about that because we feel that, hey, psoriasis does not really bother our patients. Yes, it does. Uh, to the point that I actually had a patient telling me, can, can, can I just go to a CBD clinic to get my pain of the psoriasis uh, resolve because really uh, it's just not enough. So that's really opened up my eyes on these patients. They'd rather have CBD marijuana over what we can offer them. So as you could see, the IgA severity, the severity of the disease is congruent with the symptoms that their patients are experiencing, whether it's itch, fatigue, or pain. So we always forget to ask about that, but patients do appreciate when we ask about their, their symptoms. 
So what do we have currently in terms of topical treatments in psoriasis? We have ointments, and the only problem with ointments is it's very moisturizing and can be used on thick lesions. However, it gets really greasy and messy and doesn't feel great, especially if you live in Florida and it's so humid uh, and, and you really don't want something greasy and messy and it sticks to your clothes when you when you perspire. Cream is, is more uh, of more um, elegant, it's spreadable, less greasy. Uh, however, it's considered as less hydrating. So it's not that great too, the current creams. Topical suspension, easy to apply. However, to become a suspension, it can be drying and irritating. And then there's foam, very spreadable, but once again, very, but potentially irritating. So if you have a magic wand and you have psoriasis, those are the things that patients actually prefer. They want moisturizing, absorbs easily, do Can you hear Dr. Kwong? I can't hear anymore. Oh, Jesus. No, she's offline. She's offline or I'm offline? You're online. I can see you. I can see all the attendees, but I don't see her. Is it her or is it us? It's, it's her. her. It's her. Can you, you want me to text her, Roxanne? Text her, I'm calling her. You text, I call, okay? Okay. Dr. Kwong is coming right back. She'll be back in two seconds. Who's moving the slides? She must be. There you okay. go. Okay. So I'm back. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go back. Can I go back? Go back. Maybe. Go back. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what happened. Um, Something has to happen. It has to happen now. I've been waiting. Right here. You're right here. There you go. So we've there got a, go. a new cream that we could actually have all these checklists. So uh, what is there? Whenever I get to this, there you go. So combination therapy with calcipotrine and beta metasone. That's the mainstay of psoriasis management. And there are very limited uh, formulations right now. We've got something in the foam, an ointment, suspension, and there's no cream option that's available until now. So the, the best combination of all, calcipotrine and beta-methasone. 
this is something we have used in the past few years and love because of the synergistic antisorotic effects. So the beta metasone is anti-inflammatory, antipyritic, vasoconstrictive, and as you could see on this side, it attacks those areas. And then the calcipotrien also mitigates potential skin atrophogenic effects of the beta metasone dipropionate. And then in addition, it also does a, a lot of things that is wrong with psoriasis. It inhibits proliferation, stimulates differentiation, and regulates inflammation. And as a result, it decreases scaling, inflammation, and skin thickening. So that's essentially what you're getting right now. So what we are introducing is a new calcipotrine and beta metasone dipropionate cream. And that's really what we have in the form of Winzora. So this is the indication and usage is for 18 and older treatment of plaque psoriasis. No contraindications otherwise. And then warnings and precautions, hypercalcemia, hypercalciuria, really if you're overdoing it, if either occurs, of obviously discontinue. Effects on endocrine system, it does have a corticosteroid in it and the same kind of class uh, warning applies to this topical, in which case it's HPA axis suppression and uh, because this is a high potency topical steroid if used over large surface area or areas under occlusion prolonged use altered skin barrier liver failure young age those things can cause hpa axis suppression and then of course if you use it close to the eyes and you get it good into the eyes risk of cataracts and glaucoma these are all things that are associated with topical steroids. However, with Winsora, in their clinical trials, the most common adverse reactions reported by more than 1% of subjects treated with Winsora were upper respiratory infection, headache, and application site irritation. So this is uh, Winsora, that's the look of the tube. It's blue and white. And what's so unique about it? It's the first and only water-based calciputrien and beta metasone dipropionate cream. It's also easy to use because it's once daily, convenient, non-greasy formulation. And also we are gonna show you a, a trial, randomized controlled trial against Taclonex. Taclonex being the old uh, suspension that we love in the past and we know work on our patients. But now we are showing you data that shows that Winzora actually is going to be more effective than that uh, Taclonex. And also, uh, in addition, studies have been done that show Winzora delivers clinically meaningful itch improvement as early as week one. So let's look at the pivotal head-to-head -head trial. So finally, we, whenever we have a new product, we want to know about head-to-head -head trial with our older products to see if we're going to move on. So now we are actually going to move on when you see this trial. So this is the design of the trial. First, they screen patients who are qualified, adults 18 years and above diagnosed with plaque psoriasis, for at least six months with mild to moderate PGA disease severity with MPASI modified passive greater or equal to two with two to 30% BSA. And they follow these patients at baseline week one, week two, week four, week six, and week eight. This is an eight week treatment period, one time daily. And they randomize these patients whether they're gonna get wins or a cream uh, three to one with the vehicle and three to one with Taclonex suspension versus vehicle. And then on follow-up, they look at additional safety assessments at week 10 uh, for to, to get additional things that are in terms of safety parameters. So the primary endpoint for this trial is to look at PGA of clear or almost clear, 
and it's very stringent. It's not just clear, almost clear. You have to have two great or over great improvement from baseline to week eight. And then they look at other secondary endpoints, that is percent change in modified PASI from baseline to week eight. And then they look at the uh, patient reported outcome, uh, which they call as patient treatment convenience scale. Uh, and, and they see how it's, uh, how, why they like the treatment at week eight. And then they look at itch by uh, NRS from baseline to week four and achieving greater to equal four point improvement in itch by NRS from baseline to week four. So let's look at the results. But first of all, that let's look at them demographics. Mean age about 52% across uh, the, the groups, gender, more males than females, almost 60% versus 40%. Duration of psoriasis, about 17 years, between 15 to 17 years. Baseline PGA, about 20% has mild, 80% has moderate across the board. And then average psoriasis BSA involvement, nearly 8%. Uh, that's the mean BSA, and then the mean PASI that has greater or equal to 12 has 12.4% in the Winsora group, up to 13% in the Taclonex group. Baseline mean BSA was about 7 to 8%. And this is the results of the trial. So this is the main data that shows you Winsora, which is the dark blue, versus Taclonex, which is the black, and vehicle, which is the, the gray. You could see that horse that, that is coming out ahead as early as week one. And then if you look at week four, nearly twice as many patients achieve treatment success on Winsora at week four. If you look at that, 24.2% achieved treatment success versus Taclonex, only 12.9% at week four versus the vehicle, 1.8. So obviously Taclonex works, but look at Winsora, it works better. And by week eight, 64% more patients achieved treatment success with the Winsora group over the attack the next group so this is i will call this the money slide if you want to say who is more superior Winsora or Taclonex, hands down you could say this is the study that shows it so as you could see more than four in ten achieve passy 75 with Winsora at week eight and significant separation versus Taclonex already as early as week four. And clinical meaningful improvement in itch as early as week one, because that's the first thing patients are really looking for. How do they feel about the cream? And as you could see, compared to vehicle, they could already feel that the itch is improving. And then in terms of scoring high, you know, improvement in quality of life, then they have this uh, patient treatment convenience scale, uh, which is scored out of 50 points in, uh, in terms of things where they say ease of application, how does it feel, and that sort of thing. And they actually uh, said 42 out of 50, significantly higher than Taclonex. And in when they went and, and, and did the scale, and then 45% uh, significantly higher than Taclonex in terms of reporting the uh, dermatology life quality index. So they are very satisfied overall in terms of patient reported outcomes. So happy patients, happy doctors, happy life. That's what all we all want at the end of the day. If you don't like pick uh, the slides and numbers and 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 all the uh, the 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 graphic uh, lines, this is the picture of the patient, one of the representative patients in the study. And look at that baseline, thick scales, and then by week one, they're already seeing it thinning up. 
and look at week four, week six, and week eight. This is really something that, hey, we if we follow our patients every week, every four weeks, every two weeks, this is what we're actually seeing. And these are not just, you know, basic thin plaques. These are good thick plaques. And this is another one in which it's a lower leg. And once again, baseline, visible improvement as early as week one, then week four, week six, and week eight. So that's what you could see picture-wise. So why is it? What's so special about Winzora? And you could hear uh, John D'Onofrio talking about his uh, alliance with the MC2, and this is the company, the MC2 Therapeutics, actually is the one that has the PAD uh, technology that makes the Winzora cream, cream very, very special. So um, this is the PAD technology is, is revolutionary, completely unique formulation. It's to design uh, to optimize efficacy. In other words, it's it's got that technology where you could actually uh, put the special ingredients, active ingredients in my cells and so that they can be stabilized. So even those ingredients that cannot really be mixed can go together in my cells so that they could actually be together in one cream. So by doing that, by having this micellar technology, you don't need this thing called surfactant. And surfactant we know can put the two and two together, but it is irritating. So this technology that MC2 have actually makes it acceptable and easy to use formulation and makes those two ingredients like calcipotrine and beta metasone dipropionate to be together in a water-based uh, environment as a cream. And because it there, there's an increased concentration of these uh, ingredients in the micelles, you're able to give it as a once daily, convenient, non-greasy formulation. And that's why we were able to show you how it could be more effective than Paclonex suspension. And also uh, we showed you how it could actually deliver a clinical efficacy in terms of itch improvement. So how does that work? We know calcipotrine and beta metasone dipropionate are distinct, incompatible in pH. So separation of these compounds would be expected to enhance stability. In other words, they can't be together in one room. So they have very big egos. They cannot be in the same room. So how do you get those two in the same room? So that's how you could do it with my cells where you you kind of surrounding them with my cells so they could not really have to interact but at the same time they can do their individual jobs together so that's where that technology of pad comes in because they're able to stabilize the calcipotriene and beta metasone dipropionate and to be able to get it together in one cream and then to be stable and not uh, go and destroy themselves. So I won't even say they're Batman and Robin because Batman and Robin could actually get along. These are actually two opposing personalities, but they, they do can work together, but they can't work together. But somehow PAD unites the two of them together. If that's one way of actually explaining how it works. So the more the stable the micelles of the PAD technology requires less excess surfactant because surfactant, even though it can get those two together, would make it irritating when you apply it to the skin. So as you could see, this is the transportation where all the molecules are put inside a micelle and they actually have an scanning electron microscopy image of a PAD micelle. And in that micelle, you actually have the molecules of calcipotriene. And then in another micelle, you have the, the molecules of uh, beta metasone dipropionate. And together, they can be applied on the skin and they can do their magic together. 
So in other words, we know in the past, we had that traditional oil and water emulsion. And by doing that, you could, in order to get those oil and water emulsion and to get the molecules together, you have to put a lot of surfactant so they could exist together. Uh, however, surfactants can actually irritate the skin versus the water in oil emulsion. So that can only often be in a lotion. And again, lotions are a lot more uh, irritating and less hydrating. So once again, surfactants, if we could get them out of the a formula, it is better because it's more friendlier if we get, get them out. That, that's why they were able to have a robust micelle with less excess uh, surfactant with this uh, and water base. So therefore, Winzora comes out as a water base and also a non-greasy oil in water emulsion with two of the opposing uh, um, calcipotrien and beta methasome uh, dipropionate being able to, to be in the same cream. So the cream is acceptable, is easy to use and not irritating. So safety and tolerability, let's look, look at that. And with this trial, uh, with all these uh, um, number of patients in the trial, 300, almost 300 in the Winsora group, almost 300 in the Taclonex group, and 115 in the vehicle group, there were no serious adverse events that were observed in this clinical trial only about 1% application site irritation and also very mild adverse reactions and, and generally occurred at a frequency similar to the vehicle. As, as far as other things like upper respiratory infection, headaches, and once again, adverse site re irritation, uh, they were there and the uh, URI and headaches were considered by investigators not to be related to treatment with Winsora cream, but based on the information available in the NDA, a relationship to treatment cannot be excluded. So if you look at it, very favorable safety profile. And what do you use the Winsora for? So you apply it to affected areas once a day for up to eight weeks because that's where the trials ended. Rub in gently to ensure that the plaques are saturated with the cream. Once again, they say do not use more than 100 grams per week. And this continued therapy, when control is achieved, do not use with inclusive dressings unless your provider says so. Do not use on the face, groin, axillae, and the skin atrophy is present at the treatment site. It should only be applied to areas once a day. So in summary then, Winsora is the first and only calcipotrien and beta metasone dipropionate cream made possible by PAD technology. And Winsora is proven effective in a large head-to-head -head trial with Taclonex and 37.4% of patients achieved treatment success with Winsora with 64% more than uh, with Taclonex suspension. And we showed you data about clinically meaningful improvement in, in itch as early as week one, and also showed you favorable safety profile. What more can you ask when you have a mild to moderate psoriasis? So this is hopefully the end of this slide deck. And I'd like to thank you. And I know I apologize for the early uh, uh, connection issues, but I think we got through this, Leon. Pearl, thank and you so much. Questions. Thank you so much for that wonderful lecture. It's eye-opening. What more can I ask? Where is the next close of CBD store? Uh, we passed it when we were in Vegas, but so it depends on your you state. You missed the opportunity. <laughs> yes. So actually, we have a lot of questions from the audience. They are really excited to hear. Um, so one is, and I think everybody knows this, I have trademarked, vehicles do matter. But still, there are sometimes questions. It comes up, 
why can't I put just the beta metazone and the calcipitroin by them separately, one on top of another? Uh, I'm not telling you that. Again, uh, in the, the those two are really at different pHs when they work together. So when you put one on top of the other, I cannot guarantee you that they are gonna be working optimally because one is working in an acidic environment and the other one is works very well in an alkaline environment. So by putting it one on top of the other, at the end of the day, you are not maximizing their pH. So that's why vehicles matter, because in each vehicle, you are maintaining that pH and delivering the drug to where it needs to be. So I'm just afraid that it's not going to be very effective and optimal if you do the old way where you put oh, one on top of the other. I'm not saying that you're not going to get any effect, but I think that you may not get the stability that you want of each molecule when you put it together. Absolutely, and I think the other problem is the patient has to pay two copays. Oh, exactly, and then guess what? You become the financial uh, consultant again and telling them <laughs> what, what is a better price for them. Uh, it used to be when, when I was a much younger uh, chicken, right? I didn't need to deal with all these prices, but now I had to go through a price listing before I can even get a, get a medication out. Yeah, unfortunately, yes. The next question is, but we did have calcipitrin and betametazone in one combination as a one single drug. So what's so unique? What's the differentiating factor for Vinzora compared to the uh, previous uh, combination? Okay, um, whoever asked that question must be sleeping. I, I spent a <laughs> lot of time talking, <laughs> talking about the micelles, how it actually delivers the molecule. So a lot of times, you know, you need to get the molecules deep into the, to where the pathology is. So that's why we went and compared the suspension versus this PAD technology. That's when you actually say vehicle does matter. So I cannot emphasize that enough. So I, I think that the, uh, the, the advent of getting more and more better pharmacol kinetics of these drugs, the vehicle, the way this technology is advancing is very, it, it's great. It's a great leap for dermatology because you could actually stabilize the two of them and, and, and get them to work in a better concentration and get it down to the skin. So I think that with the PAD technology, you could get it do lower down in the skin, not on top of the skin. That's the main issue. So uh, yes, they have those combinations. They didn't destroy themselves or neutralize themselves. But at the same time, is that ideal when it comes to where it's supposed to go? So that's why they decided to do a clinical trial to compare what we have, which is the combination that's together, and then what we have right now with the PAD technology. That's why it shows you clinically that even though you could, I can blow air up your you know where and tell you how great this technology is, at the end of the day, I still need to show you clinical data that it's much more superior. So that's why even though you say, yeah, we have this old product, it, it seemed to work. Yes, I showed you that it did work against vehicle, but when I showed you against Winzora, it is uh, unfortunately inferior. So if you if you know the the insurance wants their patients to have inferior products, go ahead. But really now we have superior product. Why? If I have access to it, we just talk about access with Mr. Denofrio. I would go straight to this instead of the older product. So I think you did work everybody up. <laughs> I, now I think everybody got it. So um. One other question we have is, it's really a practical one. How is the use of this product on the scalp? Is it greasy? Is it easy to spread? Uh, on Leon Kersic scalp, very easy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
but uh well uh, the the only the thing is this is a cream but i found that if you need to you have to have somebody actually spread the hair to get it in uh and versus what we have available right now which is marketed as a foam uh this is personally my um my issue is that my patients would actually say to me hey listen uh this uh this 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 foam actually is greasy as heck even though it's a foam so but this this cream it is less greasier than the foam which is like go and explain it to me but this is more of what people are talking about excellent one other one final question can you comment on the the each scale you know for a topical product especially in psoriasis we don't have that many studies that does that nrs scale and it was pretty significant that we had four point right improvement yes so you know zero uh you know they go zero one two three so they would go very itchy to the point that you cannot sleep that sort of thing so that is the uh itch scale so actually, um, you know, they have it for atopic dermatitis too, where they get from zero to 10. So, and then, and they usually use the four point improvement to say, hey, where are you in terms of itch scale? So, so at the beginning, they would have a certain itch uh, on a normal day, typically they do a, a diary uh, in the morning and at night and they can tell you what the average is. And then they'll say, oh, my itch scale is, I'm very itchy today, I'm eight. And then uh, when they start the treatment, they can then look at four point improvement. And if they say, oh, since I've started the treatment on average in the morning and at night, I would get like an eight and then now I'm a four. So if you go from eight to a four, that is actually a success in itch. So you have an improvement. So you go on the uh, improvement side. And if you didn't improve because you just went from eight to a six, then that's not a four point improvement. So that is really a stringent measure of how good your itch is. Perfect, thank you so much. That was again, very illuminating and an excellent explanation of what happened in the study. So I think we're about eight o'clock, even past couple of minutes. So I thank you so much, Pearl, for the thank very eye-opening lecture. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to thank John Donofrio again for joining us and then telling us about EPI Health. Uh, I'll, I thank RBC consultants, Rax and Chabot, and um, I wish you a very good night. Thank you very much and good night, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.